Good morning, Fresh Oil International Church. Come on, can we clap those hands and give God glory this morning? Come on, I need some noise. I know y'all tired, but listen, we got, we, we got to make some noise this morning. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come on, I feel a little churchy this morning, so it's, it doesn't take much. But do me a favor, look at your neighbor, say three words, three words. I just need you to say three words and see if they're going to get excited. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, because he lives. Come on, look at them and say, because he lives. Yeah, that's it. Just tell them, say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Come on, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Come on, can we give him glory? Can we give him glory? Because he lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you. We welcome you to our sunrise service this morning. Amen. I believe something is getting ready to take place. Amen. In this place, like never before, we thankful and we're grateful for the sacrifice that had happened on the cross. And so we believe that he's going to speak to us this morning in a great way. So tell your neighbor, you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. Our leaders are coming with our scripture and prayer, and then we'll be into the hands of our worship and arts. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Shall we stand for the reading of God's word? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him in his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep unto his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures all generations. I have read to you Psalms 100 in its entirety. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord, saints. Let us go through the throne of grace and prayer. Amen. Most gracious Father, we come this morning, Father, first of all, giving you glory and praise for who you are. God, we thank you this morning, Father, because there's no one like you. You walked over, watched over us all last night. You woke us up this morning, Father. But when we got up this early morning, Father, we got up with you on our minds. Father, we thank you, Father, for everything that you've done all week for us, Father. But we thank you for Sunday morning. That, Father, if it hadn't been for you on Calvary's cross, Father, where would we be today? We thank you, Father, for the blood that still flows from Emmanuel's veins. The blood that still cleanses our hearts, our minds. And, Father, covers up our wrongdoings. We thank you for the blood today, God. We thank you for getting up that early Sunday morning with all power. Not some power. All power of heaven and earth is in your hands. We thank you, God, for being good to us, Father. We know we ain't always been good, but, God, we say hallelujah to your name. God, we thank you today, God, that over the blood, Father, it has the, the covering over sickness. Father. It has covered over sin, Father. It has covered over our wrongdoings, Father. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for getting up early Sunday morning. And Father, we came to this place to give you glory. Now, Father, we just come today, Father, asking you to have your way, have your will, wipe our crusted, sleepy eyes this morning. Let us look our eyes up to the hills, for which comes our help. Our help comes from you, God. We come to magnify your name. You're worthy, Father. You're the Alpha. You're the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the creator, the great I am, Father. We come to give you glory. Because this is what it's all about this morning, Father. You getting up, and we came to just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're about to do. Bless the man of God who will stand forward this morning to proclaim your gospel. Father, we ask you to bless our church. Keep us on one accord. And we magnify your name and give you glory. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and give you glory today. And everyone said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Come on, keep them hands clapping. Come on. We come to praise the Lord this morning. Come on, we come to praise the Lord this morning. Come on, let's have some church. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, put your hands on it. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Say, let's have church. Yeah. Say, let's have church. Say, let's have church. 
Oh, let's have church. Let's have church. Let's go. Praise the Lord, everybody. 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 Clap your hands and praise Him. Praise the Lord, everybody. Say, let's have church. Come on, put them together. Say, let's have church. Oh, Lord, yeah. Say, let's have church. I get joy when I think about. I get joy when I think about. I get happy when I think about. I get happy when I think about. I get joy when I think about. I get joy when I think about. I get joy when I think about. I get happy when I think about. Let's have church. Sing, let's have church. Sing, let's have church. Sing, let's have church. Say, let's have church. Come on, put your hands on it. Yeah. Say, let's have church. Let's have church. Say, let's have church. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. I got my war clothes on. I got my war clothes on, y'all. If I die, let me die. 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 So I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier, yeah. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Sing, let's have church. Let's have church. Sing, let's have church. Say, what's that church? Oh, let's have church. 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 Yeah. Tell me what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? The powerful name. Most wonderful name. We praise the name. What's his name? Jesus. 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 Jesus, the sweetest name that I've ever known. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? We love to call him. 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 Tell me what's his name. 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 Jesus. 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 Put your hands on it. Come on.
tell me what is the name? What is the name? What is the name? What is the name? Powerful name, restoring a name, healing a name. Jesus, say Jesus, 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 Jesus. I love the name. I love the name. I love the name. I love the name. Well, put your hands on it if you know God's been good to you. Early on sunrise service, I need every bona fide person to open up your mouth. Maybe you're watching us by live stream early Sunday morning. And I need everybody to just open up your mouth and shout, He's an old time God. Yes. Yes. My, 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 my. One of the things uh, that I love about God is that He is so majestic. He is so awesome, and I just love him the way um, that I love him, and I just want to take a moment. Can we just clap our hands for who he is in our life? Come on. You can do better than that. Clap your hands for who he is. Yes, and so we honor the Lord uh, today, of course, for his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. I want to thank all of you all for coming out to Sunrise Service. Amen. And uh, we are elated and excited about what God is doing in the life of the believer. Those of you who are watching us by live stream, uh, thank you so, so much for getting up um, early in the morning and being with Fresh Oil International Church, my favorite ministry on the planet. I need every uh, old nation believer to open up your mouth and just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we are excited. And um, again, uh, just to share the word of the Lord on today. Let me get right into my assignment that I want to share um, with us. Found in the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 27. And I'm going to be commencing at verse 62. Matthew chapter 27, commencing at verse 62. Matthew 27, commencing at um, verse 62. If you have it, indicate by shouting, I have the bread. The word of the Lord, reading from the King James Version, says this, On this wise, now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priest and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days... I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be more sure until the third day. Let his disciples come by night and steal him away. And say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the, lay, the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, you have a watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. 
and setting a watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to tag the text and I just want to talk about when you know you're still a threat. When you know you are still a threat. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are watching us by live stream, Holy Week is one of the most consecrated and sacred seasons in the life of a Christian believer. For it's this time where we try to be biblically accurate, if you will, in terms of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem up until his resurrection. The Holy Week, in a sense, is where we try to map out what happened to Jesus from Bethany all the way to the resurrection. On last Sunday, we examined and even looked at and celebrated Palm Sunday, where the crowd hollered out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. On Monday, we partner with Jesus as he is in the temple. He is upset with the exchanging of money. Therefore, turns tables over and, according to one gospel, whips people out of the temple. On Tuesday, we partner with our Lord and Savior as he makes his way to the Mount of Olives, where he begins to prophesy about the destruction of Jerusalem and to give lessons about his second coming. And ladies and gentlemen, let me pause right there. Uh, for those of you who don't pay attention to world news and international news, um, uh, if you have not read the book of Revelation, I encourage you to read it because there is a gentleman already in the country of Ghana who is walking around believing that he is greater than the Messiah. And if you don't pay attention to scripture and prophecy, this individual is having people come all across the world to get into his presence because they're saying that he's working miracles, that he's given sight to the blind. And one person even said that they saw him walk on water. If you're not careful, ladies and gentlemen, and being rooted in the word of God and know that there's only one true Messiah, and his name is Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to understand that there will be many that's going to come and say that they can do this and say that can do that. But I know I got some bona fide believers here this morning that can testify. I only know one person that can move in my life like he's moved before. And so I need you to do me a favor, look up towards heaven and just say, God, I thank you for being the one true and living God. And so now as I jaywalk just a little bit because um, he was at the Mount of Olives and um, he begins to prophesy again about the destruction of Jerusalem and give lessons about his second coming, the eschatology, if you will, the parousia, the coming of Jesus Christ. And then we look at Wednesday, we partner again with our Savior and he goes to Bethany and has a day of rest knowing that in 24 hours it will all begin. Thursday, which is called Monday Thursday, where he gathers in the upper room with his disciples. Not only does he wash their feet, but he institutes the Lord's Supper. Things go down very quickly from there. A quick trip to the Garden of Gethsemane, a betrayal by Judas, an arrest by the temple guards, an unjust courtroom scene. And Jesus is deemed innocent, but yet still convicted to die. Friday is Good Friday where we remember Jesus being beaten, carries his own cross upside of Calvary. It was there where he is crucified between two thieves. From six hour he hangs, the last three, a solar eclipse comes. He bows his head and he dies. Saturday, theologians have called it Silent Saturday where our Savior lies dead and buried in a tomb that belonged to Joseph Arimathea. Not much is going on on Saturday. The crowds are gathered at the temple for the celebration of Passover. Worship is going on in a real sense. Saturday is the quiet after the storm. 
And my assignment is to show you, even this morning, even though he's lying dead in the tomb, the enemy is still at work. It's a silent Saturday, but much is still going on silent. Saturday is, a, again, the day that nothing really is going on from the perspective of the divine. But if you don't just pay attention to the moments and the movements of Jesus, but take a journey with me on the enemies of the cross, because even though Jesus is dead, his enemies are still at work. Can I pause parenthetically and insert a quick footnote? Ladies and gentlemen, when you know that you are doing great things for the enemy, or for God, your enemies are always at work. Glory to God. Because your enemies don't want to see you prosper. Your enemies don't ever want to see you go to the next level. But is there anybody in here that can testify that when you got God on the inside, it does not matter how the enemy comes against me. I am going to accomplish everything that God has set for my life to do. I need you to do me a favor for the first time in sunrise service. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and tell him you can't be discouraged because of your enemies. Mm. Because when you are anointed, your enemies will multiply. I wish I had somebody in here that can testify that because when I made a quick decision to say, God, I'm going to live for you. God, I'm going to make sure that my life lines up with you. Your enemies begin to multiply. And do me a favor for the second time. Put your push on your name and say, neighbor but that's why your enemy's been on your trail because they know that you are anointed for this. They know that you are a still threat to the kingdom of Satan and things that you say will not come back to void but they will come and accomplish everything that it's set out to do. I need you to do me a favor. Look up towards heaven and say, God, I thank you for making me a threat. Mm. That's why when I walk in the room, the enemy has to bow down to the anointing that's on my life. That's when I walk in the room, even though I know you've been talking about me, my that I can even come in there and change the perspective because of what's on my life. Do me a favor, lay hands on yourself and say, I know I'm a threat. I know I am. Because man of God, when I know that greater is he, that's within me that he that's in the world. Come hell or high water, devil, you just don't know who you messing with. As a matter of fact, he done stepped onto the wrong doorstep. Because is there anybody that can say, when you come to this address, you better be ready for war. Because I, I don't fight with carnal weapons but I fight by getting down on my knees and telling all of my issues to my God and he will fight for me mm. do me a favor one more time just shout out real loud I'm still a threat Matthew lets us know that while Jesus may not be doing anything on Saturday, his enemies are still at work. It's amazing. While God rests, the enemy is still at work. Make sure you catch that. Jesus lies dead and buried. His disciples run off and are nowhere to be found. I'm going to park right there and insert a footnote in terms of them hiding. Many theologians have faulted Thomas for doubting that Jesus was alive, but he received the word of his return from disciples who were still in hiding. Maybe the reason why the world don't believe who the church is is because we're proclaiming that he's alive, but yet we're still hiding. You see, you can't just proclaim that he's alive on today, but we have to make sure we are proclaiming he still lives within us. He's still alive in us, on our jobs, in our homes. We have to be witnesses for him even after today because he says, and you will know, you will know that after you have received power from the Holy Ghost, I need you to be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. This cannot just be our Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen, and then we forget everything. No, we have to be witnesses for him and let people know that when you come into relationship with Jesus Christ, that is the best decision that you can ever make. I'm not saying that your life is going to be peaches and cream but I can tell you this when everybody else walks away from you you still got God that's on your side when everybody stabs you in the back you still got God that's sitting right there letting you know cry if you have to yell if you have to but after you come out of this 
Somebody shout, there will be an after this. Uh, uh, glory to God. Uh, sometimes you will have to cry. Sometimes you will have to go through some lonely seasons. But is there anybody in here that can say, I will go through a lonely season as long as I got God on my side. Because everybody won't celebrate everything that God is getting ready to do next in your life. And so he will place you in a place of isolation. But ladies and gentlemen, it's in isolation where you get revelation glory to God and when you get revelation you might as well prepare yes Lord for elevation do me a favor slap your neighbor high five and tell them you're getting ready to go up you're getting ready to go up you're not going to stay at the same level because you know who lives on the inside of you not to be redundant ladies and gentlemen but church we got to come out of the hiding we got to let people know and understand our testimony your testimony is that God saved me your testimony ought to be, I was on my way to hell, but he saved me. Is there, is there anybody in here that's got a testimony that say, when I was down to nothing, God was up to something. Do me a favor and shout, I got a testimony. The devil, the devil is trying his best to shut your mouth on your testimony. But I declare and I decree, those of you who are watching me by live stream, you got to start telling your testimony. You got to let people know that, yes, I was that. Yes, and I was guilty of it. But thanks be to God, he wiped my slate clean. Is there anybody in here that knows about grace and mercy? I know people done wrote you off. I know people done moved away from you, but that's okay. If the truth be told, all of us got issues from the pulpit to the pew but I find me somebody that's perfect and I won't even sit next to them because when you think that you have arrived and think that you got everything together that's when God has a way of pushing you back and putting humility on the inside of you because humility is the way slap your neighbor high five and tell him don't you dare get arrogant God needs to use an humble person They are still actively attacking the ministry of Jesus. They would not allow him to rest in peace. No, the, the enemy does not cease, but he is relentless in his attack. For some, I just drove up in your driveway. You know what it seems like to go through relentless attacks. You've been there for and if it ain't one thing, it's another. You've been there when it seems like situations just keep multiplying. You've been there when your enemies are trying to bring you under another level of attack. They are just not satisfied bringing you down. And as a child of God, I need to inform you that even after today on Resurrection Sunday, the enemy will still not be satisfied with you rising above your circumstances because the attacks will become greater, but greater is he. Yes, Lord. Part of the reasons I know you will be relentlessly attacked is because I found in 1 Peter 5 and 8, we discover a relentless enemy walking about like a roaring lion, sinking whom he may devour. As a matter of fact, we find in Job when God asked Satan, where have you been? Satan responds by saying, listen, I've been doing what I do best. I've been walking around the earth looking for someone to mess with. I've been looking for someone's life to agitate. I've been looking for someone so I can get underneath their skin. I've been looking to aggravate, frustrate, cause some drama, cause some pressure so they would not trust you when it comes down to it. And I'm speaking to someone right now and you're saying, Bishop, he found me because it seems like I'm feeling the effects of a silent Saturday. I'm trying to find peace, but my enemies are at work and they just won't leave me alone. I mean, I I'm moving from one storm to another, one problem to another, one situation to the next. The good news is no matter how many attacks we go through, the reality is... We have a promise from God that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We have a God that says, I will take everything that was meant for your evil and turn it around for your good. 
As a matter of fact, you need to know Psalms 37. Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall be soon cut down like the grass and wither as green herbs. Ladies and gentlemen, I know your enemies seem like they're multiplying, but they only have a season. And their season is getting ready to expire. That's why the text says, do not fret because of evil doers, no envious of workers of iniquities, because you will reap what you sow. Glory to God. That's why you got to go positive on the negative. Bishop Noel Jones would say it all the time. You got to go positive on the negative. That's why you don't have to do evil for evil. All you got to do is let God work it out on your behalf. Is there anybody in here that can say sometimes though Bishop, that's a little hard because my flesh gets in the way. If you can only allow me two minutes Bishop just to go off and actually tell them what really I'm feeling on the inside and and that's when the Holy Ghost will begin to say uh uh because this ain't your battle Did you just be quiet and let me work it and let me work on your behalf is there anybody that can slip your hand up and shout he's worked it out on my behalf on many occasions when I wanted to slip when I wanted to say something God shut my mouth and he began to make my enemies my footstool I wish I had three witnesses in here that say he'll make your enemies your footstool He'll make it. So notice, notice what the enemies will do. And I'm, I'm getting ready to close it. I, I, I know you got up early, uh, but I might as well give you all the meat. And so no, notice, notice what these enemies are doing while Jesus lies silent in the grave. The Bible says on the day of preparation, which would be on Saturday, he's crucified on Friday, resurrected on Sunday, which is the first day of the week. But on Saturday, the chief priests and Pharisees come to Pilate again. They have already pursued persuaded Pilate to put charges on Jesus. They have already manipulated his hand to force him into crucifying Jesus under the threat to tell Caesar that Pilate has lost control over Jerusalem and Judea. So they already have manipulated him and here they come again. This time because they want to be certain that this Jesus does not get up from the grave like he said that he would. So they said, look Pilate, we remember, we remember this man said he would do and what we need you to do is give us some Roman guards that we can take to the tomb so that we can seal it because we remember him saying on the third day he would get back up again. So they begged Pilate, stay with me, they begged Pilate to grant them some soldiers to keep Jesus from rising from the grave and from his disciples from stealing his body. Now you need to understand why they are so threatened and why they need so many soldiers. When you understand why they need many soldiers, you just might understand why your life is under attack. Notice, let me push rewind. The Bible says they begged Pilate to grant them some soldiers to keep Jesus from rising from the grave and from his disciples stealing his body. Now you need to understand again why they are so threatened and why they need so many soldiers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you this for free. When you know that you are a threat, when you have one enemy and they feel like that that's not enough, they're going to go team up with somebody else that got an issue with with you have you ever had people multiply on your behalf because watch this you are a threat and they don't even know anything about you but because they're so gullible and want to fit in an in crowd they would get a along with somebody and say that they don't like you and you ain't even did nothing to them. Deliver me from folk that just want to fit in a clique and you ain't even had, a, had the audacity to ask me what you needed to ask me. I wish I had three witnesses. That's why the church can never advance to the next level because we so cliquish. We want to come in and join the clique and when new members come to these churches all across the country, you done already formed your opinion about them when they walked in instead of you getting to know them you don't even know their favorite color but now but all of a sudden you done got with some people just because they don't like them you so gullible and you so weak and you need to sit your behind down and get some teaching because the bible said 
that these people will know that you are my disciples when you have love for one another. I need you to do me a favor. Look at somebody and tell them I ain't got time to be in cliques. I want to make sure that I love everybody. I want to I wanna speak to everybody when I come in. I know I got certain people that I hang around with, but every now and then I need to go meet some new people. I need to go and introduce myself and say, hey, my name is Sally. What is your name? What you like to do? I'm so glad that you're here. Is there anybody in here that can slap your name a high five and tell them, I ain't got time for childish stuff. trying to do the best I can, Mike. And so slap your neighbor high five and tell him we got to do better. We got to do better. If we're going to help advance the kingdom of God, we got to do better. We got to show love in the house of God. We got to go speak to people, love on people, put our arms around people, and quit being clickish because we're killing the church by our actions. Let me, let me, um, I'm trying, I'm trying, Mike, good to see you, man. I just noticed. Yeah, but listen, the reason why you know you're a threat and the reason why Jesus was a threat, reason number one is because they remembered what he said. And, and I need at least 50 folk that like good teaching. Slap your neighbor high five and just tell them, you got to remember what he said. You got, when, that, when things get tough in your life, you got to remember what he said. In John chapter 2, verse 19, Jesus answered them, destroy this temple. And I will raise it again in three days. So these Pharisees and chief priests know that he has made a promise that he would rise from the dead. So watch this. They wanted the guards so that they could frustrate the fulfillment of the words of Jesus Christ. Don't miss that. The guards are asked and requested to be certain what he spoke didn't come to pass. Because remember, over in Isaiah 55, he says, so shall my word be that going forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. If we just get enough folk standing and protesting the prophecy of Jesus, then we can frustrate the fulfillment of of what he said. This is, their, this is their mindset. Now here is the problem. God has made a promise that Christ will rise. And so if we could just get enough soldiers. It won't happen. The reason why some of you are relentlessly getting attacked. Is because you are the recipient of what God has spoken concerning your life. Do you know when God makes a promise over your life. That sometimes it just won't come to pass that easy. That the enemy has to frustrate you, agitate you, make you cry about some stuff. And so the Jews, those of you who like to study history, the Jews had their own set of soldiers called the temple guards. They were the ones who arrested Jesus in the garden. But the Pharisees and the chief priests knew that the temple guards are not enough to guard the tomb. Therefore, we need some help from Pilate to add to the numbers that are guarding the tomb so that he won't get up. So I need to trump this and let you know that when you're in, I'm being redundant, but when your enemies multiply, when your problems become greater, God is about to do something miraculous in your life. When all hell breaks loose, God is up to something. That's not the time to throw in the towel, but that's the time to get focused because God is about to blow your mind. We know that he's a threat because his disciples may be up to something. The folk that here with Jesus are not, are not going to just sit around and watch this go down like this. They're, they're going to try. Think, think, is, is, put, get your mindset in, in their minds. They, they, they're going to try and creep in here in the midnight hour and try to steal his body. 
The enemy is just not concerned on what the Lord has said, but the enemy is concerned with the folk who follow Jesus. They know that there were some people in Jesus' life who would not sit idly by while he's in the tomb. The enemy is afraid of the righteous folk who hung around Jesus, knowing that these righteous folk are not just going to sit by, but maybe participate on helping the Savior resurrect. Got a question for you. Here's my question. Is there anybody in your life that the enemy is afraid of? I know, I know you got some of Satan allies in your life that enable sin or maybe cover your sin. But every believer needs somebody in your life that Satan is afraid of who don't want you to connect to them. You need some folk in your life that will not sit idly back and let the devil act a fool in your life. But they will pray for you. They will lay hands upon you. They will hold you accountable to your walk with God. They will call you on a Saturday night and tell you get your clothes ready and if you don't have a ride I'm coming to get you you need some folk in your life that will push you to the next level look at somebody and tell them this morning I'm your pusher you need someone Satan can't stand you need some folk in your life who get on Satan's nerves you, you need some folk praying for your best interests. They, they will not allow Satan to have you because they are too connected and Satan can't stand them. Here's what they say. Give us enough guards and we will make sure he doesn't get up from the grave. Make sure. Give us enough guards. Here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I'm going to push forward. Here's the problem. Um, give us the guards but notice the text, they can only put the guards on the outside. So the grave belonged to Joseph Arimathea. So by law, they couldn't go in the grave until they got permission from Joseph Arimathea. Joseph wasn't around, so they couldn't get permission to go into the grave. So Pilate... Give me the guards. We're going to add to the temple guards. Can you imagine? I just want you to see it in your, in your mind. Can you imagine all of these guards outside of the tomb? Can you see it? I mean, they, they all, you stand right here. You stand right here. You stand right here. And I need you to stand right here because we don't need any type of crack. You, you stand here. You stand here. And then you stand here. And then we're going to put people in front of you. So, because we want to make sure that this Jesus thing don't come to pass. But what do you do when your enemies are working on the wrong side? See, the enemy thought that he could mess with you outside. But what he failed to realize is this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. <laughs> and the world can't take it away. You may be able to affect me on the outside, but because I got joy on the inside, that's the reason why there's a difference between joy and happiness. Look at somebody and tell them there is a difference. Lord have mercy. Because happiness can be circumstantial. But joy says no matter what my circumstance is, I still got a smile on my face. Is there anybody in here that you've ever come to church and you know that there's some stuff that's going on in your life privately, but yet you still got a smile on your face? It's because you're not going to allow your circumstance to dictate your praise because I'm a praise him no matter what. If I got bills due, I'm still going to praise him. If I'm aching in my body, I'm still going to praise him because at the end of the day, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, they got to realize that they were working on the wrong side. And I need you to know this morning that before we get out of here, that your enemies, they're going to try to do everything that they can, but they're working on the wrong side. What they fail to realize is 
is that all they can do is do things to a certain extent. It's, it's almost, it's almost, and, and I gave this example years ago that, that, and it's, you know, it's still relevant even to today that my mom, my mom told me, she said, son, if anything ever happens to me, you're able to go to the bank and you're able to have access to my bank account. But she says, while I'm alive. Your name is on the account, but you can't make any withdrawals. This is only when something happens to me. So in other words, if you went to the bank, the only thing that you'll be able to see is the balance. And that's all the enemy can do to you by working on the wrong side. Because all he sees is the balance. But he can't make any withdrawals because he don't have access to what's on the inside. And I come to tell you on this sunrise service that the devil's trying to get access. The reason why, ladies and gentlemen, you're still a threat is because God knows what is on the inside of you. And you've got power just like Jesus had power. Do me a favor, grab that neighbor by the hand and tell them if you ever wanted to know what power feels like. You're touching one right now. Because when you were supposed to break down, you started laughing. When you were supposed to cry, you started smiling. When they thought you were defeated, you declared that you were a winner. That's right. Right there is where you need to praise him, ladies and gentlemen, because God can turn your situation around. Let me go through my checklist, and then, boys, we'll get ready to go. Reason number 10, look at the storms he brought you through. Reason number 9, remember the blessings God delivered to your doorstep. Reason number eight, think about the prayers God answered when you didn't know what to ask God to do. Number seven, remember the doors God opened when you thought a way wouldn't be made. Number six, look at the mess God cleaned up when you messed up. Five, look at the dangers he kept you from seeing and unseen. Number four, remember how God held you together when life had an assignment to tear you apart. Three, look at how many of your enemies opened up their mouths and God shut them up and shut them down. Number two, think about the 365 days that God woke you when you weren't really worthy to see another day. But then number one, think about all the sins that God forgave and what he's allowed you to obtain. Paul says that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Be conformed to his death. Do, 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 do me a favor and slap your neighbor high five and say I've got power that I know how to get things done done. But the scripture says, but if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. The songwriter said it was early one morning, just about the break of day when Jesus came and he touched me and washed my tears away. The song says I started running and I started shouting. There was no room for doubting and the choir would come in and say I got nothing but the Holy Ghost I need you to lay hands on yourself and say self I thank God for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost keeps me in perfect peace lay hands on yourself and say self I thank God for the Holy Ghost because I have not seen 
ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for me. Thank you for coming to sunrise. But grab your neighbor one more time and say, I just want to encourage you early in the morning that God knows right where you are and don't you give up on him and don't you give in I'm coming to get you Denzel is there anybody here that can lift your hands and say father I thank you for keeping me in perfect peace give me my ice cream is there anybody here slap your neighbor high five and say when I uh, trust in God uh, He'll make things uh, Worth my behalf uh, And I don't know about you uh, But I thank God uh, That early in the morning uh, I got a relationship with him uh, Do me a favor uh, Tell somebody uh, I got a relationship with him uh, And I thank God uh, That I didn't die in my sins uh, But I thank God for the blood uh, Is there anybody here uh, that you can say I thank God uh, I thank God for the blood uh, uh, matter of fact the songwriter said uh, I am uh, a living testimony uh, could have been dead uh, sleeping in my grave uh, but oh uh, uh, yes Lord uh, somebody shout I am a living testimony uh, can you say yes uh, say yes do me a favor, put your arms around somebody and say, neighbor, you going to make it because you're still a threat. When you walk in a room, you're still a threat. That's why they've been talking about you because you're still a threat. That's why they've been scandalizing you because you're still a threat. Slap your neighbor high five and say we are threat together because when I step in a room I change the atmosphere when I step in a room my enemies begin to hush because you know that greater is he that's within me the oil that's on my life it'll make you shut up the oil that's on my life it'll make you bow down just because I got a relationship with him wait your hand and say I got a relationship say yes 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 Find somebody around you and tell them you're still a threat. You still. You're still a threat. Yes, What do you do? when your enemies are working on the wrong side. Because I still have my joy. I still have my peace. And I thank God that he rose. Come on and clap your hands for him. Listen, I'm getting ready to close out. But I want you to know, and those of you who are watching me by live stream, I want you to know the power of his resurrection lives in you. So no matter the circumstances, no matter, because remember, Silent Saturday, he wasn't doing anything. He was dead. He was resting. A lot of times, you don't have to be doing anything for your enemies to still be at work. And they will.
will do everything that they can to keep you from rising above your circumstances. And my encouragement to you this morning, get back up again. Get back up again. Let's pray. Kind Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. I pray even now, God, as his word went forth and fell on good ground, producing a harvest in the life of the believer. We bless you and we honor you and thank you for what you're getting ready to do. Spirit of the living God, have thine own way. Thank you that we're still a threat. Not that we're trying to be more than others, but we're a threat because of our relationship with you. And we bless you and we honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ, whom we love and whom we serve. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and clap your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to take a moment just to make sure that everyone in this place has a relationship with Jesus Christ. Can't take it for granted. Can't take it for granted. I want to make sure that you have a relationship with Jesus. If that's you, you can say, Bishop, I need to be saved. I want you to come. I want you to come. Hallelujah. I want you to come. Maybe you just need prayer. capability is going to be in the back, um, but come from all over, all over. If you're going to sow this morning, go ahead and sow uh, this morning. Amen.
much. Hallelujah. I thank God for all of you um, sharing with us even on tonight, or excuse me, this morning, and uh, coming to our sunrise service. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. I know it's early, but uh, we are here, and uh, we are excited about what God is continuing to do. Now, right directly after, I'm going to ask that some of our men would gather on some tables over here, and uh, I want to set this area up for breakfast. Uh, breakfast is going to be served.